Do you have a TV license? Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> The BBC is responsible for some of the finest and most critically acclaimed programming in history. However, we're not here to talk about that today. Instead, we're here to talk about an absurd lie the BBC has touted for over five decades about the fact that they supposedly have a fleet of super high-tech vans that can detect when you, the public, are watching a TV in your home illegally. There are rather a lot of TV detector vans in this area tonight. If you don't have a licence, they'll know just where to look for you. So I'm assuming that people who don't live in Britain are wondering why it's illegal to watch TV. Yeah, that might be um, a little strange for people who don't know what the TV licence is. So basically, yes, in the UK we have something called the TV licence, which is basically a small fee, everyone in the UK who is able to receive live television broadcasts in their home is expected to pay. And this fee basically pays for the BBC as well as the maintenance of the critical infrastructure that allows radio and television broadcasts to happen. The problem is... Some people just don't want to pay this fee, and legally speaking, the shit all the BBC can do about it. Just to clarify as well, people don't need to have one of these licences. No, you just have to have a TV licence if your home has a TV in it and you are capable of receiving BBC broadcasts. However, because well, everyone owns a TV these days, and because the BBC control all of the broadcasting equipment, every home in the UK can technically receive BBC broadcast, because that was the point of the BBC. So obviously the original intention behind the fee was, everyone in the country, whether in the Outer Hebrides or Central London, can receive BBC news updates. And that's, like, that's a good thing, isn't it? Like, yeah. Everyone in the country, regardless of where you are, receives the same service. Things like water and electricity and that sort of thing. You pay a small fee to maintain the grid so everyone can get access to it. The problem is, in the modern day, this idea doesn't exactly translate very well, given that everyone just watches shit like Netflix, and the BBC are really annoyed about that. It's a telly, you yobbo! <laughs> Give it back! I want to nick you! <laughs> the BBC gets super arsy about this, and any British students will be able to confirm that when you're a student in the UK, you do not pay a TV licence. And what they will do is you will get a pissy letter in the post every couple of months like vaguely threatening you that a TV enforcement officer will be coming to your property unless you pay that £100. Yeah, they escalate from a basic warning to we are arranging a court date for you. Yeah, and then, then it'll just go on a big cycle because they send like mass amounts of those like that basically to scare people into paying it because they know they have no real authority to do anything about it as we're about to discuss. I remember I had a series on Snapchat when I used to do, like, when Snapchat was a thing, where every time I got one of those letters, I said, like, ooh, this looks important. It was just me putting it straight into the bin. <laughs> I'll file this with the rest and just put it into the bin. They do have a lot of exemptions to having to actually pay it, don't they? Yeah, the TV license fee, there are quite a few exceptions. You can put a few of them down here, but I'll tell the audience the funny ones, because I didn't believe this till I looked it up. You can get a discount on your TV license if you are blind. I didn't believe this, I thought, well obviously that makes sense, if you're blind you can't watch TV, <laughs> but you can still listen to the radio, so you've got to pay a reduced fee for the radio. You also get a discount if you watch a black and white television. And you must be thinking, surely in this day and age nobody has a black and white TV, but because the discount you get is so like massive, I think you get like 70% off. Like, there's still like 20,000 people in the UK today who claim to watch all their television on a black and white TV to get the discount. That's a hustle right there, isn't it? Oh yeah, I, I watch TV, but I'm blind and I've got a black and white TV, so I'll give you two pounds. How do you know it's black and white if you're blind? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> to be clear, while watching BBC broadcasts and live broadcasts in your home is technically illegal without a TV licence, the onus is on the BBC to prove that you are doing so. And the problem is, they have no real legal authority to do anything about it. Basically, they have no legal authority to enter your home, and they can't force you to speak to them. Say if they knock on your door, you can answer the door and just say, go away. And they have to do that, because they have the same right of entry as just any regular member of the public. And if you ask them to leave your property or leave you alone, they have to do it. So even if they can see a television through your front fucking door, you can knock on the door, you can open it, you can have the TV on behind you, and they can go, can I come in, sir? Because obviously they've got grounds to suspect you might be watching the TV. You can say no, and they legally they just have to leave. And what's more, sometimes they can't even do that, because you can write a letter to the BBC preemptively telling TV enforcement officers to fuck right off, meaning if you don't want them to, they can't even knock on your front door. 
So their job is to find out if you're watching TV. Illegally. And they're not even allowed to approach no your house. They have no powers with which to actually carry out that duty. I remember like a couple of years ago, they used to like have adverts, like try to scare people into doing this. And I think one of the adverts or one of the like, pictures they sent out showed a TV enforcement officer peering through someone's window. It had like a caption of something like, when you least expect it, we'll know you're watching TV illegally. And I remember that got a lot of complaints. It's basically insinuated that TV enforcement officers were creeping around people's gardens, staring through people's windows. And obviously the public is like, what the fuck? You're a public entity paid for by public money and you're spying on the public. What the shit? And the BBC very quickly got rid of all those ads. No, we don't do that. We don't do that. So they can't even look through your fucking window without getting told off. Do you remember the early adverts like, you've got to have a TV license? Uh, no, I always remember the piracy ones, but not the TV license right, ones. That's the comparison we can come to for like American viewers or people in other countries. Uh, do you know those, those really ham-fisted like piracy adverts where you wouldn't download a car? It, they were the equivalent of those, but just more British and hilarious. And my favourite one is, because it, it sticks with me because it's just so stupid, and it was a TV enforcement officer goes into a guy's house, which obviously, already the story's falling apart here, because we, we already know by now he couldn't do that. And the guy sees the TV enforcement officer, like, obviously he recognises him. I don't know how he does that, because they just dress him like a hat. And he puts a videotape, which were a thing that existed, children, into his TV in his kitchen, and it starts playing a chicken rotating. Hold on a minute. So obviously then looks, his TV looks like a microwave. Oh yeah, yeah. And the TV enforcement officer's like, oh I see no television in here. And then the video cuts to him in the bath like at a stag do or something singing. And he goes, caught yeah, and it comes up. TV license, watching a TV without a license is illegal and a crime and you'll be prosecuted. But I remember, Thinking as a kid, that's a really good idea. I hope more people do that. <laughs> These guys' only job is that, and like he was fooled because the guy is fooled yeah. up until the TV set changes. Good evening, sir. TV licensing. Oh, I haven't got a television. Yeah. Oh, that's that's for dinner. So the lesson there is these guys are fucking morons. They're not helping their case, are they? They don't make their enforcement officers look very, you know, good at their job when they're fooled by a videotape. It's like, wow, that microwave looks, you know, like awfully square. That, where's the door on that microwave? Why is there a cassette player on it? I I'd, I'd love that today. 50 inch <laughs> a 50 inch microwave. plasma screen TV. What would you do to like, because obviously the thing there is you put a fireplace, the fireplace thing on Netflix, wouldn't you? Mm. That 4K bur log burning fireplace. <laughs> it's like a moment from the IT crowd, isn't it? Nice screensaver. Which I remember mentioning because I wanted to put the clippings, it's great. Nice screensaver. <laughs> Thank you. This general lack of any real legal authority to do anything has mostly resulted in the BBC resorting to issuing vague threats to people who they suspect may be watching TV illegally in the form of letters and things like that, which we've already talked about, and, more hilariously, issuing fantastical claims about a series of amazing TV detecting vans they supposedly own. So tell me about these vans. Well, according to the BBC, it has a fleet of super high-tech vans that operate in secret, that travel around the country, that are filled with like super high-tech gadgets and equipment that can detect when someone is watching TV illegally. Not just that, they maintain that this equipment is so sensitive and so accurate, it can go as far to tell what room of the house you are watching the illegal TV set in, and even watch what you are watching on TV in real time to confirm that what you are watching is a BBC broadcast. Detector vans? What detector vans? Down the end of the street. Electronic surveillance. Makes you feel proud to be British. Oh, yeah, they can detect what programme you're going to sleep over now, you know. Well, it's the age of Big Brother, I suppose it's not that far out of the way to assume that technology exists. Oh, I should mention that they made this claim in the 1950s. <laughs> Yeah, that's how you can tell it's bullshit, isn't it? So you can, if, someone, if I said like, oh, they say they have this in 2018, you might think, all right, then yeah, they potentially might have that technology. That sounds like something that could exist. But no, they've had this same claim since the 19 fucking 50s. And you get why they made that claim in the 1950s, because nobody back then was computer literate. Yeah. If you showed someone a van with a fucking aerial on top of it and said, that can tell when you're watching TV, like Joe Public's gonna be like, well, I guess they could. Well, they got radars, I could see planes miles in the sky and stuff like that. 
it does seem within the realm of possibility that that van could tell when I'm watching TV this also new technology I don't understand. But in this day and age, and you think, they've been making this same claim since the 1950s, and you think, if they had that technology back then, why has it not evolved since? Also, if they had that technology back then, why is it that actual members of the military asked them what the fuck because they didn't know that technology existed? But a lot of people think that this van doesn't work. It's a gimmick to scare them into getting one. But I can assure you that it does. There's like a great bit where I was watching a, a documentary about it on, I think, Channel 4 or something like that. And it was great. And it's like they had this guy from the military on saying, I was really confused when I heard about these fantastical claims because as far as I was aware, that technology didn't exist today, let alone in the 1950s. So I wrote the BBC a letter asking them to explain, what the fuck, how do this work? And they sent a letter back, and I think the exact quote is, we don't want to reveal how they work, because if so, it will undermine confidence in their ability to do their job. <laughs> Effectively, that's like corporate double speak for, they don't fucking work. <laughs> All I can picture now are those fucking, like, surveillance vans from James oh. Bond. No, no, it should be that one from The Simpsons. Do you know the one where, I think we're being spied on, and she calls, it's the FBI van outside, and they're like, we're on to, she's on to us, go, 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 and it runs up, and then, like, two seconds, like, another one pulls up, flowers by Irene. <laughs> hmm. It's ridiculous to think anyone would believe these things are real because like, you can watch this video and we're going to explain how bullshit they are, but even if you just Google it in this day and age, you go, are these vans real? Even the Wikipedia page says they've never once resulted in a single conviction, which is baffling considering the BBC maintains, and this is true, that they have a 97% accuracy rate. That sounds like a bold claim, so you realise that is utterly, utterly meaningless, as one statistician pointed out, because they don't tell you what that actually means. A 97% accuracy rate doesn't mean anything if you don't tell us what is detecting 97% of the time. They can say, 97% of the time we know someone's got a TV. Well, 97% of people own a TV, so they basically driving past asking, he's got a TV, he's got a TV. That guy in there, got two. Yes, there's a TV set on number five. It's in the front room and they're watching Columbo. So the BBC never revealed anything to do with the technology, like, are there any patents or anything? No, and the BBC maintains that that's for secrecy, because obviously if they patented it, people know how it's made, and you think, okay, BBC, in which case, how about the engineers who made it? Surely they know how it works. According to the BBC, no, they don't, because they maintain, and this is true, that all of the people who made the technology that makes those vans work, worked in isolation, working on separate parts, and no one person understands in like totality how it's put together or works. They're not working on an iPhone? <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. What is this, like the next Avengers movie where the editors are like going, like covering up people's faces on the screen or some shit? It's ridiculous, but no, it's everyone who invented it works in isolation, so no one person knows how the technology works. It just works. That, that implies that, like, say, three or four engineers all built something. They had this, this doesn't work. What have I built here? And then there's the, the, someone in the, the BBC, like a big just, Ford, just stuck it together. together. <laughs> it's ridiculous to think that. And that's not, like, that's the official stance of the BBC right there. That's not like something an executive said offhand. That is the official stance on their website. Because obviously, people Google if these things are real. And the BBC site obviously trick people into thinking they are, have maintained on their website a big thing saying, oh, this is what our detecting vans do. This is how accurate they are. This is how this is how easily they'll be able to detect you watching TV illegally. Also, there's a pop-up to buying TV license right now. I remember there was an engineer thinking, oh, I want to know why this technology works. Obviously, it was made, it was evidently made with public money because the BBC is publicly funded. Surely, if they have this technology, it belongs to the public. So let's so file a freedom of information request on how it works. And we said, no, we don't have a patent because it was all developed in isolation by separate engineers who we're not allowed to name for legal reasons. <laughs> Oh, my, it's, it's so, it's kind of adorable they stick to this story after all these years, despite the fact, as I've mentioned, there is not ever been a single conviction ever made using one of these things, which is weird considering they're supposedly so accurate and high tech and, eight, and capable of doing their job. It's very obvious that everybody, sorry, 97% of the country are honest. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm honest. I definitely pay my TV license. So, to sum up, despite the fact the BBC have never been able to prove that these things work, they maintain that a fleet of them secretly patrol the UK, sniffing out people who are illegally watching TV. Not only that, but the BBC maintain that these vans have the ability to see through walls and detect with unerring accuracy what channel you are watching on TV at all times, instantaneously, in real time. 
a ballsy claim considering they don't have the legal authority to knock on your front door. <laughs> So at the time of filming this, I believe we've just crossed that 50k subscriber mark. Yay! <laughs> Show more enthusiasm. I don't know how I react to that, it's very, very strange, thank you very much. I think we've also hit over like 5 million views. Holy shit. I think, I, I, was, I was trying <laughs> to find... Actually, that's more impressive, that's, <laughs> that's a lot. I was trying to find some interesting like things to compare it to, and I think, uh, give, give it a few days and we'll go over, we'll go over the population of Norway. <laughs> We'll have more views in the entire... So that's the equivalent of everyone in Norway watch one video once. Man, get fucked, Norway. Do you know what? Put a Norwegian flag behind with a big penis drawn on it. <laughs> get fucked, Norway. We've beaten you on views, man. Hells yeah. We're going to lose subscribers from yeah, Norway. Oh my God, yeah, that giant demographic we've got in Norway. <laughs> oh, I'm really sorry. Sorry, Norway. All, Don't... The, all the Norwegian fangirls. Actually, no, turn it into a smiley face. There we go. We fixed it. We fixed it. We fixed it. No, that's cool. I'm really happy. Thank you very much. Do you know the weird thing for me though is, because I've been on the, uh, I've been writing articles for like seven years now. Now I've been on like the back end of that work for years and years and years. I've never really seen the, um, the response and the result of obviously having your face out there. So I've had stuff go viral before. I've had like millions of views on other articles. I've had videos that I've wrote the uh, script for get millions of views. I've had even like images and tweets I've sent out. But never before have I experienced like this kind of response. I am getting like, I just want to put this out there right now. Please stop sending me messages on Facebook and Twitter. I work all the time. I don't have time to answer. I'm very sorry. Also, please stop sending me friend requests on Facebook. I get it. Just follow me on Twitter. You get all the same stuff. I've had bad experiences with that that I'm not going to get into now. But suffice to say, I had to not. I had to slap a motherfucker down because they were overstepping. They were being, in the words of Charlie Murphy, a habitual line stepper, and I was not putting up with that. But it's really weird though to have this big influx of people who only like just see my face on a YouTube video as opposed to like, I'm guessing the smaller um, families we had before that who watched like every video before that. And I've had a lot of people saying, and it's finally happened, so I can mention it in a video, that I look like Bo Burnham. Oh, has it finally it's come fine, up? People have finally realised we had enough of an influx from America that people realise I look like Bo Burnham. And I'm assuming you could put a picture of Bo Burnham oh, behind. Oh, definitely. I remember watching one of his stand-up sets and looking at it and going, that's just me. I, I looked at him and went, I've seen that guy in a mirror. That is me. That looks so much like me. What the fuck is going on here? Because I didn't see it until I watched his stand up. And so I went, this is weird. This is really freaking me out. How does it feel to know there's someone out there who looks like you and is more talented? Oh, it's gutting, isn't it? <laughs> it's proper good. It's my auntie when I mentioned it to her. So who's Bo Burnham? I went, oh, he's a comedian. And she went, oh, so he's not like you at all then. It's like, oh! oh. Dunked on by my auntie. You can't even argue with that, can you? 